we may be making an airbrush video later on so uh, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit about what's happening here uh, this is our main air supply coming from our compressor at over 100 pounds uh, we've got a quick coupled to a water trap to a regulator and then to a coupler and then I've got a regular coupler on my airbrush hose and uh, so this regulates it down to right now it's at 60 pounds I run 70 a lot but I'm not going to jack with it 60 is enough and uh, since sometimes these quick couplers don't hold it popped back off a minute ago I ran it down through here back under there and everything so that in case it wants to pop off it don't fall so far to the ground and I've got extra long hose as you can see I've got two of them so I don't have to keep it right with me all and up close and uh, so all I'm doing is getting ready to airbrush here and uh, some of the stuff uh, always keep a pair of pliers with you what I've done before we turn the camera on was that this paint's been sitting this is a water based createx type and uh, it's formulated clear coat over so I'm not worried about putting spar urethane over it but the water based paint will build up ammonia in the bottle and if I was to pull this needle out of here to clean it Without this breather hose plug, it could shoot paint right out the end of it, all over something. So I just cracked the bottle, relieving any pressure, because I didn't have an old needle handy to, to uh, pop this breather hole that might have some dried paint in it. I couldn't see daylight through it. I couldn't see the paint, so I want to make sure that's, that that's unplugged. Then I pulled my needle out. It was pretty stiff. I'd get my pliers. I like keeping them handy, I like keeping a rag handy uh, to airbrush. It's part of the part of the package having that with you. Okay, so there's my pliers ready if I need to do anything. Sometimes I need to take this head off, which will expose a little brass tip that conforms to this needle and gives you a tight seal. So I take that head off and clean that tip out. Right now I'm cleaning up some dry paint on the outside, which is called this little outer cap. Now this little outer cap, I like keeping it clean for GP. It doesn't always make a lot of difference in what you're doing. And there's that little brass tip right there that can get dried paint in it. And that can screw up everything. So when your airbrush wants to keep leaking or uh, when you try to shut your paint off as you're spraying with your trigger and it keeps coming out it can very well be because there's dry paint in that little brass tip so how I clean is I just take that like I say that head off the end take the little brass tip in my fingers which isn't this this here once again this is the outer cap I'm just cleaning I take that little brass tip in my fingers and I would just kind of shove and scrape the inside of it and it'll wind up pushing a little dry it'll push the dried paint out the end and you'll you'll also the little brass tip you'll inspect it and see if there's any cracks because if you go trying to push that through there where there's dried paint and everything it's just going to break and, uh, and have a crack and that will also cause it to continue to let paint out when you're actually shoving your trigger forward so we're, we're going to assume since I can't see very well anymore it looks like the brass tip is okay and not split or a chunk out of it or something on the end it looks pretty good so I'm going to drop my needle back in there I'm going to shove it all the way up and I've got a little bit of crap in there okay I've got all the way through the trigger area and into this past the seal that's right here and I've got it up in there and if I feel it kind of clack you know like the metal against the brass then I kind of know it's not got the dried paint in there so I want to push up there feel it clack And there's a real tight seal right here, either that, which is good, either that or there's paint. It's got a little clack to it. I'm going to go with it. Once again, this paint right here, it just pushed through. Wipe that off. You'll be doing that a lot. It'll get dried paint right there, and that will interrupt your doing a fine line. And uh, we're going to do everything from fine line to soft lines for transitions and all. So we've got the compressor on, we've got it reduced down to 60 pounds, and we're going to quick couple to it. I'm going to have troubles with this, uh, this hose needs fixed up. You see it's not got a good... 
I often keep me a rag handy. Here's a fire brick. I'm just going to test, see what I got. I've got no leakage coming out when my trigger's forward. That's excellent. <clears throat> that can do me a little, little fine line without any problems. So that means I can do a, fire, a bigger, softer line also. Now here's the horses we're going to try to airbrush up. Uh, I consider this a tough job because we wanted to do them bay, do black mane, be great, be no problems. Now I'm considering this kind of a tough job to, that I haven't done before. We're just going to try to add some realism to the mane with some soft lines, some shadowing, uh, deep spots, you know, kind of make it look natural. And uh, we'll be doing the eyes. Uh, <clears throat> Sorrel horses do have. Sorrel horses do have uh, black skin. I probably don't even have to do this fine line right here. Because I'm going to transition the, the black skin on the lashes, on the brow, um, eyelids and all. Hmm. I kind of like to cut this in anyway. Now, you say this is black skin around here. Here's the see the soft line. Put a little bit darker right here, like a shadow. Darker skin right in there. Go so, right. Your soft lines, you get uh, the realism. You need both hard and soft for realism. Now my airbrush is not being quite so good. There we go. Kind of doing all right here. I want to be real easy here. I can always add more, but it's hard to take it away once I get too much on there. Again, this is soft line. Make it darker, but not lighter. When you think about a light source when you're airbrushing, you don't want shadow on both sides, top and bottom, or left and right. We'll probably do shadow on the other side, underneath, but not necessarily on top. My airbrush could be more responsive. It's, uh, a little scary. If it doesn't come out responsively when you're using the trigger, you can think about if you're fighting it, then all of a sudden a little, little clog breaks loose in here and you're going to be in trouble when a big black spot hits the whole project. I'm trying to get rid of any little bad paint. about tempted to try the other black paint we got over there. It's like horses do two at once and you're gonna like one better.
Now I'm, I think I want a little bit lighter. This is definitely under a lead, a little bit darker. We're accenting. Oftentimes when a horse's nostrils are flared, it's red up in there, like regular internal membranes. But you can get away with uh, Hollywood versions here. Skin being black, it's okay to get outside of Like there's not a lot of hide down here. I mean, there's plenty of hide, but not a lot of hair. And this is definitely can't be a hard line down here. It's gotta be soft. Kind of like blocking out, kind of get started, don't take too much so you're sure you know where you're at. I think it's safe to go ahead and I'm going to get try the other brush.